One of the biggest changes in my photography development has come with having a better understanding of editing in Lightroom. So today I'm going to share with you three editing techniques that will help take your landscape photography to the next level. Hey everyone, my name is Ben Reeder, and when I started editing in Lightroom, I pretty much stuck to the sliders in the basics section to do all my editing. I'd come in, I'd click the auto button, maybe make a couple of tweaks, and that was basically it. Uh, and the reason I didn't venture far outside of that basic section is I just didn't understand what everything else in Lightroom actually did. Eventually I did some research and started messing around, and now instead of editing photos like this, I can edit photos like this. So what I want to show you today is the three techniques that I use every time I go in and edit photos to make sure that you understand the software that you're using, whether it's Lightroom or something else. It's the same basic functions that really all photographers should be using when they're editing their photos. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because what I'll do at the end is tie together all three into one edited photo to see how they all work together. Also, there are chapter markers below. So if I'm going over something that you're already comfortable with, you can skip ahead to something else. All right, so the first technique or tool that you should be comfortable with is adjusting your white balance. Now, most people shoot in auto white balance on their camera, which is totally fine. You can really make a lot of changes in post-processing. Um, but I do recommend, as I've said before, that you shoot in raw format. That brings in more information to the photo file and gives you more flexibility once you're in the editing room. Let's take a look at some of the options you have with white balance in Lightroom. Okay, when you first open up Lightroom, you're going to have the white balance section over here on the right. You've got a few different items to look at. You've got this drop down here, which is gonna show you a few different presets. Now, if you've been shooting in raw, you will have more options over here, but it usually defaults to as shot, which basically is just the white balance that came out of the camera. You've also got the temperature slider and the tint slider. Now, temperature is gonna basically range from warmer colors to cooler colors. And if you double click on this, it will always just reset it. And then tint will adjust whether it's more magenta or more green. So tint, you really only make minor changes with. Temperature, I, I tend to be kind of in the five to 6,000 range, probably more often than not. Um, but what I will sometimes do is either come in and keep it as shot if I'm comfortable with it. I might change it to auto to see what the camera, or sorry, what Lightroom is suggesting. Um, but you can also use this eyedropper option here to select the white balance based on the color in the photo itself. So if you click on the eyedropper and then you go into the picture, you're going to see this little screen pop up next to it showing a kind of a grid, of, a grid of different colors. Now, basically what you've got here is it's showing, this is what you would see. Um, it says show loop. This here is going to show you this little screen of colors. At the bottom, you'll see an R, G, and B, which is red, green, and blue. And you can see what the rating is for each of those colors in that section that you're hovering over with the eyedropper. So if I go over to green, you're going to see the G is higher, the R and the B are lower. If I go into this blue section, you're going to see the B is higher. So what you want to do is look for a neutral color. Even though you're adjusting the white balance, really it's not necessary that you choose a white item on the screen. Sometimes what you really just want is something gray, uh, something kind of neutral. And what you're looking for is all three of those numbers at the bottom to be a very similar number. So, you know, on a white, they're going to kind of range 97, 96, 90. Um, you know, green's not going to be a good option. Um, if you're over in kind of a grayish area, um, that's usually the best bet. And what I'm going to do is come over here and probably just land somewhere in maybe this grayish. So 76, 75, 72, that's pretty good. Click that. And now you see that it adjusted it slightly. It's a little bluer. And that's probably a good starting point. If you choose different items on the screen, um, you can actually go over here to Auto dismiss is usually usually defaulted to on, but if you unselect it, that allows you to kind of hop around and try different sections on the screen to see what each of them will do. And that's really the main thing you want to do with white balance. You're basically just selecting your starting colors for the rest of the edit. And you can always go in and adjust it. Like I said, you can come up and make it warmer if you want. You can keep it cooler. Uh, but I like to start off with something that's pretty comfortable and then come back and maybe revisit it towards the end after you've done some other edits. Now, the next item I wanna walk through is using the tone curve. This is definitely a feature that I stayed away from initially because I just didn't understand what it did. So let me jump in and show you how you can use it. 
All right, so the tone curve is essentially a way to adjust the contrast of the image, and it just has more flexibility and nuance as opposed to just using the contrast slider in the basic section. Now you can always increase or decrease contrast up here, but I find that using the tone curve gives a lot more flexibility. Now when you first open it up, you've got all these circles here. I usually work from the point curve option. I don't do a lot with using the, the red, green, and blue um, channels to adjust those. I basically stick with this. This is a basically a manual way of adjusting the tone curve. There's also a parametric curve that you can use, which adds some kind of ranges to the shadows, the darks, the highlights. So it kind of gives you this bubble to work within. So it doesn't let you kind of slide too far either direction. But I usually use this to start. Now you can go over and there's some presets. It's linear to start, which means it's a straight line. You can just choose medium contrast and then adds a real slight S or you can go to strong contrast and it's just a little bit stronger. And you can see the difference with what it did to the, to the photo here. There's a lot of contrast here. It's too much in my, in my view. So medium is probably fine. Um, but what you can also do is if you want to do it manually, I like to put in plot points at these three spots here and then just make my own adjustments. Just slide it down slightly, slide this up slightly, and then sometimes what I'll even do is if you're too tight over here on the blacks, sometimes what you can do is add just an extra dot there and slide this up just to bring the blacks a little bit further away from the edge. The same goes for the whites where you can actually also bring this down just a little bit if you want to, if you're too close and clipping on that side. So basically adding that S curve just adds a lot of depth to it. So I'm gonna turn this off and then back on and it's just a lot deeper of an image. It probably requires a little bit of adjusting here, bring up the shadows maybe a little bit here, but essentially you've got a better looking image now that you've adjusted this tone curve. Again, off and on. Let me actually hop over to a couple of other photos just to show you some examples of how I've used this before. So this is an image of a boat floating in a harbor at sunset. Uh, this is with the curve applied. And then if I turn it off, you can see how it flattens out a bit. On and off. So it's a subtle change, but I think it really helps to elevate photos to be much more professional looking. Here's another photo of a lighthouse in Maine. It's Nubble Lighthouse. And again, this is with the curve applied, and then this is turning it off. It just looks so much more flat um, and, and not nearly as deep and rich as having that curve applied to it. And then finally, this example is a sunrise image of Old Orchard Beach in Maine. And again, I will turn this curve off. It flattens the image out. And now back on, it's a lot richer and more vibrant. The colors just look better when this curve is applied. So those are some examples of how I've used the tone curve to add some depth and contrast to different photos. Now, if you're finding any value in the video so far, I would love it if you'd give it a like um, and then consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. All right, let's jump over to adjusting the color. So there's the HSL and color slider, and I'll jump in and show you how that works. Okay, so here's an image I took up in Maine at Moose Pond uh, last October. And uh, what I did with this one is I really wanted the colors to pop. I wanted that contrast between the blue and the orange to be the, the kind of focus of this shot with that tree in the middle and then the blue sky and the reflection in the water. So what I basically did is I went in and made some changes in the HSL. So HSL is hue, saturation, and luminance. So the hue is gonna be kind of the version of each color. So the tone of each color, so red, you can adjust this slider to make it to be uh, more of a pink color or more of a reddish orange color. So what I did with this is I went in and kind of made some tweaks um, first to the hue. Um, and you can see that I, I brought, I kind of changed the, or, the orange to make it more orange and less yellow. I made the yellow a little more orange. So I really what I wanted to do is bring these trees and, and highlight the orange there. Um, I brought up the green uh, hue just slightly to make it a little greener. And then I went into the saturation and I actually brought the saturation way down. So saturation is how deep or rich these colors end up being. So I really wanted to de-emphasize the green and put more emphasis on the yellow and the orange. So I just brought the yellow, orange, and red up a little bit, um, the blue in the sky up just a little bit, 
And then with the luminance, I really, the only change I made in this is I made the green darker. So again, I wanted the green to not be quite as bright and sunny as it was initially. And so the result here, you can kind of see the before and the after. So here's the original image as far as the color goes, the original image, and then this is the change I made. So again, before and after, and you can see it's much more vibrant. And rather than just sliding up everything on the saturation slider, which would have done a lot with the greens, kind of over oversaturated the greens, I wanted to go color by color. And that's really the advantage that you have in this section is that you can choose which color you're adjusting and then change the tone of it. You can change how deep or rich it is and then how bright it is. Um, you can also switch over the color section here basically it's the same exact thing it's just you go color by color so I, i'm right now in the red and i can go through and change the hue saturation and luminance for the red and then go through and do the same for the orange so it just depends on your work style what you want to do um, but i tend to kind of go through these one by one the other thing to keep in mind with this is if you click on this little button here and then hover out right over the screen you can see it highlights the blue um, and the kind of bottom right that zero is highlighted. So you know what color, whatever color you're hovering over, this will associate it over on the right so you know which one to change. So if I go over here, it's now under the orange. If I go here, it's under the yellow, the green. So you can kind of, if you're not sure which color you want to adjust, you can use this to, to hover over and kind of identify which color each one on the screen is. Here's another image I worked on, and this is a different approach. So what I did with this one is I didn't want to stick with the original natural colors of this. I really wanted to go for a specific style, a darker green blue kind of vibe to it. So what I did is I, you know, I did other edits on this to make it darker to begin with. And this is actually the image that you have um, up behind me over here. You can actually see it on the wall. Um, but what I did is I basically went in, I'll show you first the original so you can see what the colors are. So you can see that this is very, you know, brown and green and natural. This is the kind of end of summer in the woods. But what I wanted to go for again was a much cooler version of this. So this is, again, artistically, this is a little bit of a different style. You might not like it, but the point is that you can really go in and do some interesting things by, by adjusting the colors. So the main thing I did here is I really desaturated everything to start. So what I did is I brought all the colors down to zero. Um, and that basically turns it into a black and white photo. And then what I did is I just brought up, I had the green and the blue down, and then I just brought this up so it was closer to zero. And then I brought the green back up until I, it was closer to zero. So now the green is there and the blue is there, but I don't have any other, the oranges, yellows, reds, all that kind of brown color. I wanted to get rid of that. So that's an interesting technique that you can use where you basically desaturate the entire thing and then choose one or two or three colors that you want to bring back up to create some kind of color contrast in the picture. And now with this last photo, um, again, this is something very specific I was trying to do. So I'll show you the original first. And it was kind of early evening, late afternoon. Um, so there's plenty of light and there's a lot of color in this picture to begin with. There's that bright yellow house, the yellow lobster traps, there's that red house in the distance. But what I wanted to do was go for a kind of a more creative edit with this. And so what I really did again was, was to bring everything down and then I just brought back up the colors that I wanted. So I wanted to, to emphasize this red house and make it stand out. And the rest of it is almost like a black and white. There's definitely some color still in here. There's some blue, the yellow is still there, but it's, it's you know, you can see the yellow saturation is negative 72. Green is negative 70, even the blue negative 47. So, and the red I brought way up. So um, I made these adjustments to get a really specific look and feel in this image. I made it darker and emphasized that red and used the HSL section to really pick and choose which colors I wanted to show up in this image. Okay, so those are the three techniques that I wanted to walk through. Uh, I'm curious to find out what your thoughts are. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these color choices. Are you someone who likes to keep the, the colors more muted? Do you like going for these dark and moody edits? Do you like bright and colorful shots? Uh, what are your preferences when it comes to color? Leave a comment below. Now I'm gonna jump back in and show you how I bring all three of these elements together into one image. All right, here we have a raw image file from a sunset shot that I actually just took about a week ago when I was on vacation up at a lake in Maine. So it's pretty dark to start and I'm gonna keep it on the dark end because that's just really how the shot I think looks best. But what I wanna do is go through, adjust the white balance, I'm gonna adjust the tone curve and then tweak the colors a bit to see what we can come up with. So this is the white balance as shot. Uh, if I go to auto, it definitely warms it up a bit. I actually kind of like that, um, but let me just take a look and see if I do the white balance adjuster over here, 
and try to find something that's kind of on the gray side like that. So this keeps it more blue, um, brought the pink way down. I actually think I like, I think I like the auto a little bit better, uh, maybe a touch more pink, um, and maybe make this a little bluer. Um, but again, this is all kind of personal preference, um, but I think that that's a pretty good starting point as far as the coloring goes. I'm gonna bring the exposure just up a little bit and then bring up the shadows a bit so we can see some more of what's going on here. Maybe bring the highlights down a bit. So that gives us a starting point as far as the brightness of the image. Now I'm gonna go to the tone curve and I'll just check out and see what does medium contrast do. So that's good, it makes it pretty dark, um, probably a little darker than I want it right now. I'm gonna go back and, and readjust the shadows just up a little bit and maybe even go up a little higher with the exposure, but I don't wanna lose that sky if I bring this up and if I bring this down. So I think that's looking pretty good as far as the initial color with the white balance. You can click done on that. The tone curve is set. Now let me go in and make some adjustments to the colors. So I'm probably not gonna do a lot with the hue. I might make the orange a little oranger. Oranger, is oranger a word? It is now. Maybe the yellow as well. And then I'm just gonna bring up that orange because that's really the kind of highlight color here. A little bit of yellow. And then there is some of that magenta that's through here that I'll bring up a bit as well. Uh, the blue, I do like the blue at the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna bring that up a bit as well. And then I'm just gonna turn off these colors to see what that change looks like. Off and then back on, off and then back on. So the last thing I tend to do is I'll come back up and make any final tweaks, make it a little brighter so you guys can see it on the screen. And then I actually might even just warm this up just a little bit. And there we go. So that looks like a good final image. It kept it dark the way I wanted it. You still got the dark trees in the horizon. You've got this contrast in the sky, the smoothness and the color across the water. But all I really did was make a couple of basic adjustments, adjust the white balance, um, an adjustment in the tone curve, and then some tweaks in the color. And that's really all you need to do on a lot of these photos. So there you have it. Those three basic editing techniques are things that if you're not comfortable with them yet, Try them out, mess around, see if you can get more comfortable. It'll really elevate your photos to the next level. I hope you found this video valuable. Maybe there's something in here that you didn't know and you hadn't used before. So hopefully there's a little nugget of information in there that you found. Um, please give it a like. I would really appreciate it as this channel is starting to grow. Every like, every subscription really makes a big difference for me. That's it for now, and I will see you in the next video.